Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. I hope you all are well. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So I know that we are all getting into the habit of fasting ta'ala after Ramadan. And subhanAllah, there are two times in which you can really make this habit a part of your life. It is right after Ramadan and it is in the winter. After Ramadan, obviously, because your body is used to it, and inshallah ta'ala, you're trying to get the reward of fasting some days of shawwal in the winter, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it that the days are short and the nights are long, and that's why the companions used to call the winter the spoils of the believers, because you have easy fasting, easy qiyam, bidnillahi ta'ala, and the reward is just the same, inshallah ta'ala. So... These are two timings in which a person can really pick up this habit. And I wanted to capitalize on this particular timing, bidnillahi ta'ala. And I wanted to compile uh, 15 benefits, 15 rewards for nafil siyam, for voluntary fasting. And inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to try to run through these in a way that hopefully you all can benefit from bidnillahi ta'ala and will encourage you to really keep on going inshallah ta'ala. So number one is that it's sunnah. Uh, and that should be enough. It is the way of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the way of the righteous that came before us. When Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says in the Quran, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Fasting has been prescribed upon you the way it was prescribed on those who came before you so that you may gain God consciousness, piety, taqwa. And the beauty of that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it fard on the ummah, made it mandatory for the ummah, just as he made it fard, mandatory for the ummahs that came before, so that you could have this bare minimum of piety. But as the ulama say, the mark of the righteousness of the, of the prophets that came before, the prophets of those nations, and the best of those nations was their siyam and their qiyam, their fasting and their prayer. And so you want to go to the next level and not just be amongst those who have taqwa, but those who have ihsan, those who have excellence. And the Prophet ﷺ described to us Dawood and of the marks of his righteousness. The Prophet ﷺ said that the best fasting is the fasting of Dawood ﷺ. He used to fast one day and then break his fast the next day. So he used to fast alternate days, alayhi salatu wassalam. And our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to fast Mondays and Thursdays. And he used to fast the middle three days of the month that are known as ayyam al-bil, the white days, because the moon is fullest on the 13th, 14th, and 15th of every lunar month. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, awsani khalili sallallahu alayhi wa sallam abhi thalaf, that my beloved one advised me with three things, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, بِصْلِيَامِ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ مِنْ كُلِّ شَهْرٍ To fast three days of every month, وَرَكْعَتَيَ الضُّحَى And to pray the two rak'ahs of duha وَأَنْ أُوْتِرَ قَبْلَ أَنْ أَرْقُدْ And for me to pray witr before I sleep. So the Prophet sallallahu used to advise the companions to increase their fasting. Some of the companions like Abu Talha radiallahu anhu would fast every day even except for the two Eids, and that is the exception. Otherwise, the Prophet ﷺ said, the best fasting is up to the fasting of Dawood salam, of fasting alternate days. And subhanAllah, I've actually met people in my own life that practice, practice this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to aspire the way that these amazing people aspire. So that's the first benefit, the first reward. It's sunnah. You're following the way of the Prophet ﷺ, and you're following the way of the prophets and the most righteous of the nations that came before you, all of whom had some level of prescribed fasting. Number two, your day starts with Allah and the angels sending their prayers upon you. And subhanAllah, this is a beautiful uh, narration because it's before you even start your fasting. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-mutasahirin. That verily Allah and his angels pray upon those who eat suhoor, those people of suhoor. So imagine, subhanAllah, you're starting your day, and before you've even started your fast, Allah and the angels are sending prayers upon you as you are eating to prepare yourself for the day of fasting. So your day starts off with Allah and the angels praying upon you. That's number two. 
Number three, your day ends with an accepted dua. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that of the categories of people that have their dua answered, he said, the fasting person until they break their fast. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ لِصَائِمِ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ لَدَعْوَةً مَا تُرَدْ That verily the fasting person at the time of breaking their fast has a dua that will not be rejected. And there's so much beauty in this narration, subhanAllah. Of them is that, you know, usually when you look at the times in which dua is answered, it has to do with things that are completely out of your control. Like the rain, for example. You can't control when it rains, but it's a time in which the rahmah, the mercy of Allah is descending. And so the Prophet ﷺ advised us to make dua at that time. Travel is somewhat in your control, but it's not something that you do for the sake of it. Fasting is a condition that you choose when you want to choose. And at that time, your dua is answered. And particularly the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, at the end of the day, when you are most tired, when you are most broken, when you're most vulnerable, and you've made that greatest sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your day ends with an accepted dua. So it starts with Allah and the angels praying upon you, and then it ends with you praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an accepted prayer. Number four, even your breath is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we want to be in a state in which everything that we do and that we say is rida, is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the breath of the fasting person is described as being pleasing to Allah, that's without dhikr even, without the remembrance of Allah. What then of the one who beautifies their breath with dhikr? The Prophet ﷺ said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ بِيَدِي لَخُلُوفُ فَمِ الصَّائِمِ أَطْيَبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ رِيحِ الْمِسْكِ He said, وسلم, I swear by the one in whose hand is my soul, the smell that comes from the mouth of a fasting person is more pleasant in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment than the scent of musk. So if your breath is pleasing to Allah, what about the rest of you, subhanAllah? Number five, you meet Allah with a lifetime of fasting, a lifetime of pleasing Him. The Prophet sallam mentioned to us famously, obviously, that whoever fasts Ramadan and then follows it with six days of shawwal, it's as if they fasted the entire year. And he gave us the logic, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that you know, fasting one month is like ten months because the minimum of a good deed is times ten, and so adding six days to that is like fasting two months, and a person will have two months with Allah subhanahu wa taala. So two plus ten gives them an entire year. So in another narration, the Prophet sallallahu said, "Whoever fasts three days of the month, kana kisliyami dahar." It's as if they have fasted an entire lifetime. The logic of that that the scholars mention here is that this is any three days, any three days. So you could choose to fast the three days in the middle of the month, and that's the best. Or you could choose to fast Monday and Thursday, and that is blessed and beautiful. Or you could choose to fast any three days of the month, and that is something, inshallah ta'ala, that will yield you incredible rewards with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you meet Allah as if you fasted your entire life. So not only is your breath pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, imagine meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your entire lifetime has a fasting tag on it. So your entire lifetime is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number six, fasting is good for your health. There's the famous narration, sumu tasihu, fast and you will be healthy. Now the hadith has a weakness in it in terms of its chain, but its meaning is sahih, its meaning is certainly authentic. That the Prophet ﷺ, anything he tells us to do is good for us in every single way. And so a person who fasts also does what is good for their health. And you think about the things that are coming out now about intermittent fasting and people that slow down their appetite and discipline their appetite and how you lose gratitude for blessings in front of you, the blessing of your food in front of you, as well as the blessing of your health when you're constantly in consumption mode. And the Prophet ﷺ used to warn us against overconsumption. So when we fast, we discipline our diets, and inshallah ta'ala, our health improves as well, and this is a benefit. Number seven, fasting disciplines your desires. The Prophet ﷺ, when he said, oh young people, if you're able to get married, then do so. And if you're not able to get married, then he said, 
a person should fast. Because if you fast, it will certainly restrain your desires. It will discipline your desires. And so the scholars say that fasting teaches us the strength of willpower, the strength of disciplining our desires. And if we're able to discipline our desires, then we're able to channel them in ways that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than have them go towards that which is displeasing and leads us to destruction. So a person learns willpower and they learn to discipline their desires. Number eight, fasting protects you from sin. There is a reason why taqwa is mentioned as the yield of fasting. Taqwa is an awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that prevents you from getting stuck in, into sin or getting pricked by sin. In fact, the Sahaba described it as a person walking between thorns and making sure that they're not pricked. Taqwa comes from the word wiqaya, which means armor. So some people's taqwa is thin, sometimes it's thick, but it puts a barrier between you and sin. Now, fasting in particular, the Prophet said, As-salmu junna. Fasting is an added layer of protection. So if you think of it, it's an added coat of armor. Taqwa is instinctive. It's something that gives you a sense of awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you have an extra layer of armor on or not. Fasting is that extra layer of armor that allows you to become so protected from that sin that even when the armor is not there, the taqwa will protect you instead. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned a salm junna that fasting is an added shield. And he said, فَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ So if one of you is fasting, فَلَا يَرْفُثْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ وَلَا يَسْخَبْ Then do not uh, use obscene language. Do not raise your voice. And if someone approaches you in a way that is not good, then say, I'm fasting. A person should say, I'm fasting. Here, subhanAllah, fasting becomes a shield from the sins of the tongue because the tongue leads a person to hellfire more than anything else. So when fasting makes you more aware of what you are saying, the sins of the tongue, then it's a protective barrier from that. It's also a protective barrier, a shield from your arrogance. Because when the Prophet ﷺ is talking about how to respond to someone that approaches you in a harmful way, the Messenger ﷺ is giving you a protective barrier from your arrogance. And so if it protects you from the sins of the tongue, and it protects you from the sins of the ego, what is fasting not a shield from? And so the scholars say it's a shield from your sins. It's a protection from your sins. Number nine, it's a shield from the fire itself, from the fire itself, in terms of the reward that it yields. The Prophet ﷺ said, That fasting is a shield from the hellfire, just like you carry a shield in battle. So it protects you from the sins that lead you to the fire, and it protects you from the fire itself. Number 10, it puts a distance between you and the hellfire. This is subhanAllah, one of the most powerful ahadith in this regard. قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ مَنْ صَامَ يَوْمًا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بَعَدَ اللَّهُ وَجْهُ مِنْ جَهَنَّمْ سَبْعِينَ عَامًا Whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah removes their face from the hellfire by 70 years. He said in another narration, سَبْعِينَ خَرِيفَةً 70 falls. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, by a khandaq, the distance of which is a hundred years. So a ditch is put between you and hellfire, the distance of a hundred years. And what does Allah tell us in the Quran? فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاسِ Whoever is dragged away from the hellfire and entered into paradise, that person has succeeded. Imagine every single time you fast, every day you fast, a ditch between you and hellfire of a journey of a hundred years. So what then of a person that fasts three days a month or fasts, uh, Mondays and Thursdays, and even more than that. Number 11, it is an intercessor for you on the Day of Judgment. The Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ said that fasting and the Qur'an are intercessors for the servant of Allah, for the slave of Allah on the Day of Judgment. Fasting says, O oh my Lord, I prohibited him from food and from his desires during the day. 
So allow me to intercede for him. And the Quran says, I stopped him from sleeping at night. So let me be an intercessor for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows both of them to intercede on your behalf. So it comes, subhanAllah, in the form of a person, an intercessor. When would you need an intercessor more than that day, subhanAllah, in the form of a beautiful person and argues on your behalf with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful. Number 12, a special gate in Jannah for you. And I know we've spoken about this, but I want you to pay attention to the narration in specific here and look at how beautiful it is, particularly for the fasting person. The Prophet said, That there is a gate of paradise that is for the fasting people, known as Rayyan, endless drinks, waterfalls, rivers, for those that used to prohibit themselves from drinking during the day. And the Prophet said, No one will enter into that gate of paradise except for those who distinguish themselves by fasting. يقال, أين الصائمون? أين الصائمون? It'll be called out on the day of judgment. Where are the fasting people? Where are the fasting people? And then they will be escorted to this gate. They will enter into it and no one will enter after them. These are not the people of just Ramadan. These are the people that were distinguished by their siyam, distinguished by their fasting, both in terms of quantity as well as quality. May Allah make us amongst them. And may Allah allow us to be called not just from Ar-Rayyan, but from all of the gates of paradise on the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen. Number 13, your deeds are presented to Allah while he is pleased with you. The Prophet ﷺ said that on Mondays and Thursdays, the deeds are presented to Allah and in the middle of the month. And he said, فَأُحِبُّ أَنْ يُعْرَضَ عَمَلِي وَأَنَا صائم. I love that my deeds are presented to Allah while I am in a state of fasting. SubhanAllah, imagine as your deeds are going up to Allah, you're in the most blessed state that is known to Him. And Allah is pleased with your breath. What then of the deeds that are ascending to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you're in a state of fasting? So that's number 13. Number 14, this is the deed that Allah rewards more than 700 times. And before we get to the specific narration here, you know, Allah refers to fasting in the Qur'an as a sabr وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَةِ Seek help with your patience and with your prayer. And the word sabr here is referring to fasting. So fasting is literally called the practice of patience. And what does Allah say about the patient? إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حساب. Verily, Allah will reward the patient without any calculation, without any restriction. The reward for the patient is vast and it is expansive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith Qudsi about fasting, كُلُّ عَمَلِ ابْنِ آدَمَ يُضَاعَفُ الْحَسَنَةُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا إِلَى سَبْعِمِئَةِ ضَعْفِ That every one of the good deeds of the child of Adam is going to be rewarded by 10 up to 700. قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِلَّا الصَّوْمِ Allah then said, except for fasting, فَإِنَّهُ لِي that verily fasting is for me and I reward accordingly. So subhanAllah, fasting is a special deed that is rewarded beyond 700 times. Allah says, this one is for me to specifically reward you on the day of judgment. Lastly, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, You break your fast with Allah. For the, you know, subhanAllah, if you think about this benefit, it's greater than all the other benefits. You break your fast with Allah, number 15. For the fasting person, the Prophet ﷺ said, is two joys. The joy when you break your fast and the joy when you meet your Lord with that fast. What better than to meet Allah with the deed that is so pleasing to him that he has not even quantified it for you yet. And we are so afraid of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he's displeased with us. What about a person who remains in that state of pleasing Allah with this deed and looks forward to meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a meeting that has been described with joy by the Prophet What better way to break the fast of this dunya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah? What better way to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So these are 15 benefits, tremendous rewards, dear brothers and sisters. Hold fast to this habit of fasting. 
and encourage others to do so as well, inshallah ta'ala. Just like in Ramadan, you know, we look around and others are fasting. Try to get other people involved as well, inshallah ta'ala, and fast if you can, even if it's just three days a month, and it's as if you fasted a lifetime. Jazakumullahu khaira. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.